we're in the construction of the Draco and we're on step 60, which is on page 15. Uh, we're going to take the nose cone and we need the bow tail section. Um, to separate these, you just snap them in half. It's pretty simple. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start trimming this up. Uh, and that is in step 61. Um, we want to cut off um, this bottom part of the boat tail. So right along here is a groove. Um, you can do this with a hobby knife, but a razor saw works a little bit better. We just want to score it all the way around. So I'm twisting as I'm sawing. And it will follow the groove pretty easily. Okay, so now I'm, I'm started to go through the plastic and I can take this out and I can just snap it off. Um, it will follow the groove there. And if you want to clean it up with some sandpaper, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. And you can get that inside edge as well. Okay. Now, um, from the uh, instruction sheet on page two is this uh, wrap. And we need to cut that out of the instruction sheet. And I've already gone ahead and done that. And, so, and that is right here. And I've gone ahead and glued the edges together, which is right here. They've glued together. And this is going to go onto the boat tail like that. And what you want to do is there's a small seam line on each side of the boat tail. Um, there's one right along the plastic loop right here that goes down and you can see it. It's very fine, uh, but you want to line up one of the vein lines with that seam line. And if you do it right, there should, on the opposite side, this one should be aligned as well. And I just want to tape it in position. And then I'm going to take a pen, pencil. <laughs> Remember, always use a pencil. And I want to mark each of the lines. Now the one with the seam line is pretty obvious. Uh, but the other two that are 90 degrees apart from it, those we want to mark. So this one's a seam line because it's on the opposite side of that. And then here's one that's in the middle. Okay, and at that point you can remove the template. And I'm just going to take a ruler and extend those lines just to make them so these are easier to see. So this one's on a seam. That's that one. And you want these to be pretty good aligned. This one's on a seam, so this one, my pencil will kind of follow it. And here's the final one. Okay. Now, um, from the plywood sheet, we want these parts. And these are BB. And we'll have to remove those from the sheet. Just lost my knife under this mess here somewhere. Oh, on the floor. Okay. So.
And that's the last of those parts. Okay, we're going to um, sand these just a little bit. Uh, this edge here is going to be glued on to the uh, bow tail like that. And I want to just sand this outside edge, just clean it up a little bit. And in fact, um, I'm going to sand the edges as well. This, these little parts right here are going to go, here's my boat tail, or my base section. And inside of here was that piston that we made earlier. And if you notice the little cutouts, these have to slide into those cutouts. So if you make them a little bit thinner by sanding them, um, you can be a little bit more forgiving in putting them onto here. So at least sand this top surface and then the two face sides of the piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, we'll be right back. Um, and I also want to round off this back corner right here on both sides. Um, that will make it slide easier. You know, if it catches an edge, you'll go around that corner just a little easier. So go ahead and knock those corners off. these on we're going to use some medium or thick CA don't want to use thin on there because um, the thin CA will go it'll wick right into the wood and then you'll probably glue your finger uh, to the part so this we're going to put on here we're gonna we're gonna kind of put it in the, 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 the corner there and then walk it forward along the line Okay. And I'm doing this fairly quick um, because I don't want the glue to be totally set because I'm going to test fit it into this. Make sure that it goes in nice and smooth. And, and if you're smart, um, what I should have done is put them all on one edge. So here's the line and align the line up with the edge. That way I can actually see along the edge. Um, but since I didn't do that, that's what you should do. <laughs> so now I'm doing it the hard way. All right, so now this is going to go, I'm just loosely sliding it in here and seeing if it lines up with my slots and it's not too bad on mine. So I'm looking down there, making sure that everything, you know, there's if there's an equal amount of space on each side. So this one here is a little tight. So I'm going to try to slide it over just a smidge. I need to put a little bit more glue on it. This is why I was trying to work fast so that it wouldn't, wouldn't set so quick. Oops. 
Now it's not set enough. Okay, I like that fit better. Just like that. Um, now I'm going to put. A, I'm just going to touch it with a little bit of extra CA with the thin CA, the water thin. And when I say water thin, it's not you put water in it to thin it out. You can't thin it. You have to buy it where it's already thin, like water. Somebody, uh, somebody made that comment to me on one of my videos. Is they, they said, how do you thin it? Well, you don't thin it. You buy it that way. Just want to point that out. Okay. And now we're going to take some of the accelerator and spray the whole thing. And uh, then we can wipe it off. Okay, so now we're going to test fit one more time. Oh, that's a beautiful fit. It's a little, you know, it has a little bit of friction. And after you paint it, um, it's going to be a little bit have more friction. So you might come across and sand the upper surface just to knock off a little bit of friction before you paint it. of these is to make sure that the upper stage or the, the glider portion, this portion here, um, this is going to go onto the back like that and this is going to go into here like this and when they mate together this will hold the two pieces perfectly aligned. It's going to be like that and see there's no wiggle here. Without those pieces of wood right here, it would it would flop around in here. Um, and if it's not perfectly aligned straight, when the two pieces aren't perfectly straight, you know, your rocket could go crooked. And during testing, that happened to us. And because of that, we had to modify the kit to add these little pieces of wood. And that fixed the problem. So now these work really good. All right, so we're um, finished with step 64. I'm going to pause here, and then we'll go to step 65 in the next video.